It is 916. A new book explores popular culture during the Cold War and how men's adventure magazines helped shape the attitudes of those who served in Vietnam by portraying real men as both heroic warriors and sexual conquerors. Author Gregory Dadis says those concepts affected views of masculinity that resonate today. The book is called Pulp Vietnam, and Greg joins us now live. Thanks so much for being with us. Good morning. Thanks, Larry and Robin. Appreciate you having me. It seems like a very a specific uh, topic for a book. How did you stumble upon these magazines and think there was a trend here? Yeah, thanks. I, I was teaching the class in War and Gender at West Point. I was uh, stationed there in my last five years, uh, 26 year career in the Army, and I was teaching the history department and was uh, looking at Cold War um, uh, pop culture and, and how they created these visions of, of militarized masculinity and uh, just kind of found these these amazing photographs of covers and that just kind of set me on this path and, and looking about looking at how pop culture created these visions of, of militarized masculinity and and tried to support the Cold War effort um, during the, this kind of crucial, crucial time in the 1940s, uh, 50s and 1960s. So uh, sex and violence have, have always been used to sell magazines or, or what have you. Was the government somehow involved in this as propaganda to inspire young men to, to want to be enthusiastic about the war? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a time period where the nation for the first time after World War II doesn't demobilize after a long war. It, it, it seemed to be in a in the sense where we are today in this long perpetual war in in that case uh, against communism in, in today's case against terrorism or whatever however we may craft our enemy and so i, I think for um the united states government this these magazines were a way to continue to inspire young men to think about how the military could help them become men that um, in much of pop culture i would argue today as much as back in the 50s and 60s that that joining the military was the surest path to achieving a sense of manhood. And, um, and I think we're still dealing with the effects of that um, today. So what was the effect on the generation that went to war in Vietnam and, and the generation today? I think for Vietnam, what it does is it sets up certain expectations. And so um, for those readers who are consuming men's adventure magazines, they go to Vietnam believing that they can become this heroic warrior. At the same time, part of that construct is becoming a sexual conqueror and this idea that the exotic Asian, the exotic Oriental will willingly um, provide them sexual rewards for their heroic performance on the battlefield was part and parcel of those expectations of many young men who are going to Vietnam. And I think for today, there, there's still sort of a, a cultural militarization, if not a military fetishism about how we look at the military. We're still very much attracted to war without thinking about the, the detrimental effects of, of endless war. I think there's kind of imbalance right now about how we we want to honor the veteran, but at the same time, we, we don't are uncomfortable about debating how much um, there are either potential benefits, but more likely the costs of war. And so, you know, I think these pop cultural images like you see in the men's magazines are still with us today about setting up false expectations about what war can provide and um, and how we think about war and, and how all that is embedded into our views about manhood and masculinity. So, Gregory, what was the impact on these soldiers who had this one expectation? Now they're in the middle of Vietnam and they're realizing, oh, this isn't what it is. Right. Uh, how does that impact them psychologically and their impact on how they fight? That's a, that's a great question, and I think it impacts them greatly because Vietnam, in particular, I think is an incredibly frustrating war for so many Americans. Um, they, they don't get a sense of, of clear victory. They don't get a sense of clear progress. And so when that vision of heroic warrior doesn't seem to, to come into fruition, I think many of those frustrated Americans then turn towards the civilian population, in this case, the South Vietnamese population, and take out their frustrations on that population. And many of those clearly were Vietnamese women. And, and then kind of met these, um, these soldiers kind of distorted their views of what sexual conquest meant. And, and that had a, a clearly a, an awful impact on the Vietnamese population. Wow. Again, the book is called Pulp Vietnam. You can follow Greg on Twitter at Gregory Dadis. Thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. Time now for On Town. Hey, 